membership of the European Union has been beneficial in building a safer, stronger society and more prosperous economy for all in our country. For the last 60 years, the EU has played a key role in building and maintaining peace across Europe. Our direct access to this huge market of 500 million people is good for our economy, good for inward investment and good for the export of Scottish goods. European laws also guarantee Scottish workers' rights. They protect our entitlement to have paid holidays and ensure all workers, men and women, part-time and agency, get equal treatment. The Tories want to turn back the clock on progressive measures like these. We know Michael Gove feels that the EU has acted as a handbrake on the plans of the current UK government. And that is exactly why we must do everything we can to retain our membership. I want a Europe that supports economic growth and champions human rights and which promotes solidarity and the social contract which exists between states and their citizens. And from the soapbox to the studio, Tasmina joins us here now. You said in your film there that you want to protect workers' rights. Why do we have to remain in the EU to protect workers' rights? Because that's been the foundation for the protection of workers' rights for so many years. Which ones? If you, well, if you look at the, the contrary position and where, if we leave the EU, where we might be left, and that is in a position where uh, the Conservative Party is currently in government, have unfettered control over workers' rights. And the Trade Union Bill is one example of that, where we've seen the erosion um, of workers' rights and the erosion of trade unions um, and their works. But the, the rights I'm referring to are in relation to paternity and maternity pay and protection in relation to discrimination in the workplace. Right, and you say they would go under a Conservative government if we left the EU. I think we've had enough indications from the way uh, the Tory government have been behaving, uh, even since I've been elected, that that is highly likely to be the case. Right. I mean, what guarantees can you give workers that their rights will not disappear because, if the UK leaves the EU? Because their rights were introduced by an elected British government. I'm no advocate for the Labour Party, but it was a Labour Party in 1999 that introduced a national minimum wage. It but was a Labour government in the 1970s that introduced maternity mm. cover. Maternity rights are higher in the UK than they are in the EU. But would they be protected? I mean, could, a, could a government roll back those rights? Here? No, I don't think they would. As we get no, Don't wealthy... think they would is not the same as don't think they could. Could they unravel some of those protections for employers? Well, it's, it's the European Union at the moment that I would say is frustrating the rights of workers. There's the Posted Workers Directive, for example. This allows big corporations to frustrate the ability of workers in the EU to enjoy the sort of rights that they enjoy in the UK today. It right. is the EU that is run in the interests of big corporate vested interests, not working people. Right, but I mean, Eurosceptics often cite burdensome EU regulation as something they want to get rid of. So which regulations would you like yeah, to see? If we left all existing EU rules and regulation, would become British rules and regulations. All of them? All of them. Well, what are you worried I, about? I, I asked a question, precisely that question you asked just now, Joe, to a number of government ministers at the dispatch box in the run-up uh, to where we are just now in the past few weeks. I said specifically because Michael Gove said he's being prevented from doing things he'd like to do because of EU legislation. And I've asked... What specific piece of re regulation or directive are you referring to? And I've been unable to provide it with any kind of an answer. And I think this just speaks to the idea this just speaks to the debate in which we find ourselves, where it's lacking in fact and substance and rhetoric and fear mongering statistics. Not least, Douglas, if I may, you're just speaking about VAT and taking control over VAT. Uh, in terms of your voting record, you've voted uh, consistently over a long period of time to increase VAT in our national parliament. No, I, that's simply. Not, not the case. Well, I, I believe in lower taxes. No, and on, have voted. you voted on that issue? Have you voted against or for, I should say, yeah, increases I, I, in VAT? I have voted to reduce tax and I want to on reduce VAT. VAT. I, I, no, I want to reduce VAT and I voted in the... Uh, three previous uh, budgets for measures that would reduce the burden you of tax. You voted to increase all the way up to 20%. All right. Douglas, let's, talk, let's talk about immigration. Would you like to see higher or lower uh, rates of migration to the UK? 
I think we should be talking about immigration in a positive light. This debate, unfortunately, has uh, plummeted to, to the, the depths of uh, a negative rhetoric. But my immigration. question is, would you like it, to see it, higher or lower? Just, I mean, it could still be positive well, either way, but what would you like to well, see? Well, if, if we can take the figures that actually immigration contributes to our economy, it's a very good thing. Sure, if but, we're, num if we're but on the numbers side, so you're happy, basically. So, so here's broadly, the figure, with, Joe, on that basis. Looking at migration in and out, about, say, 2.6 uh, people have come in and 2.2 million Brits have left. Uh, of all of the migrants that are here and are contributing to the UK economy, they actually contribute in total £55 per second. This nonsense that they're a drain on the economy needs to be dealt with now. We need to, we need to look about the positive effects of immigration and certainly very welcome in Scotland and unfortunately for the good people of England, this has descended particularly in that part of the country we know to a debate about immigration because the statistics and the polling in Scotland is different we, in right, terms we, of how people we, we, Let's talk vote. about the numbers yeah. though, Douglas Castle, because yeah. for you, are the numbers the critical part of the debate on immigration? The issues to do with control. At the moment, nearly 500 right. million people have a legal right to come here. Over a four-year period of the last parliament, two and a half million people, that's the equivalent to 19 cities the size of Cambridge, came here. I think it's right that we have control. The risk does of remaining... bringing down the numbers? I, I think it does, yes. Right. The, risk of remaining, the risk of remaining is that we have no control. Sure. If we vote to leave, we will be able to elect a government that can tell us how much they're going to reduce how immigration. By. At, the moment, abroad, at the moment, people have said that, you know, David Cameron said he would reduce immigration to less than 100,000. No government can do that unless we vote to leave. Although which is higher in terms of net migration? Those who come from outside the EU or those from within the EU? Well, if we had an Australian points-based system, no, no, we wouldn't make the, the, question. Absurd, the question. absurd and discriminatory sure. policy. But there are more people coming from outside the EU at the moment, as it stands, yeah. than there are from and within the EU. every we single year it. since we, we joined the EU. It. We can't control migration into this country unless we can control the legal right and of half a billion had, people to come if, here. if you had that control, would you bring the numbers down? Down to tens of thousands. I would re I would vote to reduce it to less than a hundred thousand. You yes. would. So the numbers are important because I mean Michael Gove says it's not about numbers; it's about control. Uh, and I think for some I of think. the support, yes, but actually you've said you would like the numbers that's to come my down too. View, that's your but There are others, and if we elected uh, 650 uh, MPs who could make this choice, we might be able to have a meaningful discussion about migration. But, but do you agree? A lot of your supporters for the Leave side would actually just like to see the numbers come down. No they one are is not talking about bothered. closing the borders. We're talking about right. control. An Australian points system on June the 23rd. And that control is important. Why shouldn't the UK control? They could still have fairly significant numbers of migrants coming to this country, but they could decide who comes and how many. A fundamental tenet of being part of the EU and indeed the single market is free movement of people. The mm, ridiculous that suggestion that 500 million people will come to the UK is, and certainly not if they've heard some of the arguments in this debate that would put them off coming, even setting foot in this country because of some well, of the rhetoric we've heard. Two and a half million came here every four-year period, but, so but many millions about, are coming. But Douglas, what about those in this country who want to go abroad yeah, to the yeah. EU? What about those who want to learn and study and engage and have business there. You don't need what to be in a political them? union is, to live two, and travel and work two, in other countries. It is a two-way street. And uh, I mean, the worst, one of the worst things that can happen to this debate is indeed UKIP's involvement, whether it's Farage's comments at the weekend about uh, migration, meaning increased sex attacks on women, which is absurd, following on, of course, from his general election uh, debate performance when he talked about uh, HIV-positive uh, uh, patients being a drain on the NHS. Well, let's pick up this on kind that of discussion doesn't on the help first anyone. remark. Douglas, what, 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 what do, you, do you agree with Nigel Farage? that the number of sex attacks on women would go up if we stay in the EU? I'm not going to get drawn into that. You need to talk to Nigel about this. But you wouldn't comments. agree with but that? I think there is a positive case to say that if we vote to leave, we can have an Australian-type points-based system. I don't want to get involved in, in, in anything beyond that, but I think there is a, a, it's important to remember that when people come here, they make a, a positive contribution, but we should have the right to control who comes here. Right. That's only fair and reasonable. Can I just very briefly ask something slightly at a tangent, sure. but stories today that actually the number of Remain MPs who would be a majority, if UK voted to leave the EU, would vote to stay within the single market. So in other words, Parliament would trump the, the, the vote, if you like, um, on the referendum. And as a result, then Britain would still be exposed to free move movement of people. Do you think that would be something you would support, that Parliament would have a vote to stay within the single market, even if the UK votes to leave but the EU? Joe, I touch on the issue broadly. I, I think the single market is of critical importance sure. to our, our businesses. Uh, and I, it's not just about being in a big trade organisation. It's to do with um, the, the, the fact that you've got similar regulation and the, and the like. Sure, but what so, about no, no, parliamentary no, no, votes? Here's the deal. I mean, I think, we, again, this is part of the issue, the uncertainty of where we're, where we're leading to. If uh, we do vote, 
uh, to get out of the EU on the 23rd of June, uh, Article 50 will be invoked. Uh, and there, then a discussion, a, uh, a, a process of negotiation, which take a minimum of two years, could take longer, takes place between us and the, uh, and the, mm. the, the EU. Now, the truth of the matter is, at the end of that negotiation, <coughs> It will be for the government of the day to bring back to Parliament a deal. Okay. And if that deal is not satisfactory, then I think it is absolutely beholden upon members of Parliament to, if, if they feel as strongly about that, to throw out that deal. Uh, the, this, the, the I, remains this, by I, saying I, they're not going to accept this, this, is, this is a nightmare. The referendum is not a good look No, 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 no I, I'm not saying we're not accepting the, the outcome of the, uh, of the referendum, but equally we but have to negotiate for the interests mm. in the decades to come leave for me, this leave. country. Right. No, I, 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 listen, my, and we've my got to leave this discussion. We, we, would, we would need to leave, but not on any terms. Right. We would need to get the terms right. Well, that, that is means... an interesting point of discussion which we might be able to pick yeah. up for the end of the programme. Tanzmina, thank you very much thank for coming you. in.